Welcome to this channel. Today the topic of our video is microbiology of air. Air of microbiology or microbiology of air is the study of living microbes that would be suspended in the air. Air in which we human breath in it's not a natural environment for microorganisms to grow because it does not contain enough moisture and nutrients for their growth and reproduction. It is not a medium where they can grow but it is a carrier for particular matter, dust and droplets which may contain these microbes. Air has vegetative cells and spores of bacteria, fungi, algae and protozoan cysts. In the atmosphere, air mainly acts as a dispersal or transport medium for these microorganisms. Compared to soil or water, air contains fewer number of microorganisms. Airborne microbes are the airborne biological contaminants. For example, bacteria, viruses, fungi and airborne toxins that are passed from one person to the other through air without any direct or physical contact. Airborne particles are cause of respiratory elements in humans, for example, allergies, asthma and respiratory tract infections. Likewise, airborne fungal spores can cause plant diseases and they are also the cause of disseminating many common saprophytic fungi. During a sneeze, millions of droplets are expelled that contain water and mucus. These droplets are initially about 10 to 100 micrometers in diameter, but then they rapidly divide to droplet nuclei of 1 to 4 micrometer and these droplet nuclei contain many virus particles and bacteria and this is a significant means of transmission of various diseases in humans. Microorganisms are separated from one human to other by two ways that is coughing and sneezing while the air microorganisms are carried by dust particles and droplet nuclei. So after the transmission of airborne microorganisms, what is the fate of airborne microorganisms? Their fate depend upon the following factors. First is humidity. Various microorganisms grow at a specific moist moisture in the environment, but when the humidity increases further, it can kill the very growth of various microorganisms. Again, the sunlight or specifically UV light can have a killing effect of microorganism by denaturing their proteins and DNA. Temperature by bacteria and various other microorganisms can grow at a constant temperature, but they cannot survive on extremes of temperature. So the extremes of temperature would cause killing of the microorganisms size of particles bearing microorganisms and the nature of microorganisms that is the degree of susceptibility or resistance of particular species to the new physical environment. The microbiology of air can be studied under two headings that is outdoor microflora and indoor microflora. One of the most common source of air microflora is soil. While microorganisms found in water are released into the air as water droplets. While the primary source of indoor airborne microorganisms are human activities like coughing, sneezing, talking and laughing. Outdoor air may contain algae, protozoa, yeast and molds. Molds in which mold spores are predominant for example cladosporium. Bacterial species that can be found in air uh, can be spore forming and non spore forming, and the examples include Micrococcus, Sarsina, gram negative rods, gram positive rods, and aerobic spore forming bacteria. Examples of fungal species that can be found in the air include Cladosporium, Alternaria. Pullularia, Penicillium, Botrytis, and Stemphylium. So, what is indoor air? 
the air found inside the building is referred as indoor air the most typical genera of fungi in indoor air include penicillium and aspergillus while the most typical genera of bacteria found in indoor air include staphylococci bacillus and clostridium in case of occupants being infected the flora may vary accordingly these are some examples of human diseases that can be transmitted by inhaling airborne droplets viral diseases include chickenpox influenza measles german measles mumps and smallpox while examples of bacterial diseases include whooping cough meningitis diphtheria pneumonia and tuberculosis these are some other examples of human diseases that can be transmitted by inhaling particles from environmental sources not directly from an infected person the examples include cetacoses that is caused by chlamydia cetacai bacteria and its source is dried powdery droppings from infected birds legionella disease that is caused by a bacteria legionella nemophila and its source is droplets from air conditioning systems and water storage tanks acute allergic alveolitis that is caused by various fungi and actinomycetes spores and the source of these spores are decomposing organic matter aspergillosis that is caused by a fungi aspergillus fumigatus aspergillus flavus and aspergillus niger and the source of these fungal spores is again a decomposing organic matter histoplasmosis that is caused by a fungi histoplasma capsulatum and the spores of this fungus grow in old withered bat or bird droppings cochidiodomycosis that is caused by a fungi cochidiodes emitus and the spores of this fungi grow in air blown dust in desert regions of central south and north america where this fungus grow in the soil thank you for watching this video stay tuned for watching next informative videos like this